Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti. I am Nitin Gokhale. Our special guest today is distinguished scientist, president of Aeronautical Society of India, Dr. Satish Reddy, also a former boss of the Defence Research and Development Organisation, who uh, helmed the organisation at a historic time when uh, Operation Shakti, India's first anti-satellite test, was carried out. But today we are going to talk to him about uh, the plans that India has for Make in India. Uh, also encouraging uh, innovators and industry uh, in India, and also why India is now considered one of the leading missile powers and uh, something that uh, we should be all proud about. So, welcome to this program, Dr. Reddy, and uh, thank you for being here. So, let me start first up with uh, what you have done uh, in the past, um, say, couple of years, where India's missile strength or missile, uh, I would say, power, uh, seems to have aug- got augmented. Uh, so, what were the programs that you were really uh, proud about? Uh, particularly the missiles, uh, what we originally started at the surface-to-surface missiles, Prudhvi, Agni, and uh, then went to Dhanush, Agni-1, Agni-2, Agni-3, Agni-4, Agni-5, and then the Akash and missiles. Then later, uh, we went into air-to-air missile, Astra, and that is already taken by the inner air force. Then uh, we developed the surface-to-air, little longer range, medium-range surface-to-air missile. Then we have completed successfully the anti-tank missile, NAG. Then the helicopter launched Helena missile and the ballistic missile uh, defense programs. So the Pradai surface-to-surface missile, one more important missile. So, so many missiles have been developed which are now accepted by the armed forces and paved the way for India to become a missile power. And many more programs are underway now, sure. which uh, I can allow me. Absolutely. Also, I think your naval missiles are also progressed well. A lot of uh, naval missiles, whether it is the BrahMos naval version or uh, short-range uh, SR-SAM missile uh, is another important missile, or helicopter-launched SR uh, anti-short-range anti-aircraft uh, anti-ship missile and minimum energy missiles, mm-hmm. and also even air-launched air-to-ground missiles. These are all another um, series of missiles which are being developed, and man-portable anti-tank missiles, and UAV, UA, we launched uh, smart munitions, and many things in the series, actually. And even, in fact, that period, uh, we had uh, about 24 seconds of the hypersonic uh, test demonstrator vehicle, putting India into also the club of uh, the countries which have actually worked on hypersonics and paved the way for hypersonic uh, uh, vehicles. You can say vehicles. So, you have all missiles what the world has and you are trying to develop uh, some of them. uh, Some of them have already been developed. And all the technologies are indigenous. Whether you talk about propulsion, rocket motors, navigation system, control systems, radio frequency seekers, IR seekers, radomes, everything has been developed. Industry has come up. There are at least about 300 to 400 industries which are working only on the missile technologies who are able to give. And in fact, the, mis- the industry has come so well uh, that the Akash missile, which is uh, produced by the uh, BDL, 85% by value has been coming from the industries. Local industries. In this MSME. That's a beautiful concept. Uh, public sector is integrating and uh, giving it. Right. Whereas all the systems and parts and the private sector. Private sector. Yeah. So, this is the way the system has evolved today. And so, we can say that the missile technology, subsystems, the entire ecosystem exists here in the country that we have become. But I like to mention here, mm-hmm. it's not just the missiles. Yes. Uh, we have become self-reliant in the field of radar. Right. Any type of a radar, I think the country can make, right from gallium arsenide, gallium nitrate technology, TR modules, and we have successfully made the... Uh, AESA radar for the LCA, mm-hmm. now it pays the way for making for you know, Su-30 and other aircraft also. Uh, similarly, we are in torpedoes, we are in electronic warfare systems and AVAC systems. Or right. ETRA has gone into Air Force now right. and we have developed the guns also. We have developed the uh, ATAC. armored vehicles also. Yes. ATAC's gun has been yes. developed. And so, I um, mean, LCA, final yes. aircraft. So, uh, many areas the country has become self reliant, uh, particularly in the last uh, six, seven years. That's right. Many, many systems have flown in making the country very successful. So, I, I agree completely that, you know, uh, the, the pace of uh, development and induction has really picked up in the past five, six years. Um, 
it also uh, gives uh, i mean gives impetus uh, by the government uh, on the various policies it has adopted absolutely i mean uh, you work so closely with the armed forces and the government so Such tell us more about that yeah. very clear message from the honorable prime minister that we need to have our indigenous arms right indigenous equipment mm. and this uh, large imports should be stopped mm. develop quickly in the country so the policy of make in india and then atmanirbhar bharat and bringing in uh, many policies in the ministry of defense uh, the honorable raksha mantri has been continuously taking reviews and proposing many schemes idd um, make one make two sure. and uh, so many other policies and trying to give maximum capital budgets for the indigenous equipment these are all the measures which are given and given a confidence in the industry in the country that if we work on this there is somebody who is going to buy my equipment sure. that is what industry needs a confidence that right. he needs production orders mm. now that is seen that yes and particularly with the dcpp concept what is brought by drdo mm. that is a development and production partner mm. first time the large systems like missiles bombs and other things have gone to private industry correct there are at least about 8 to 9 missiles are being made by the private industry today right. uh, never we have seen it uh, that happened in the policies of the government of uh, india now mm. and which have uh, given the confidence and made all the necessary <coughs> ecosystem to come up and so uh, large number of private industries started coming in and uh, making uh, now there are about i think if i am right about 136 dcpps okay and the avs what they have taken is more than about 60000 crores for the private industry yeah. alone right So here the private industry must also be given credit that they have uh, stepped up to the challenge they have absorbed technology and they have also come up with the products the moment they saw the, the mood of the government and the actually the motive of the government they actually immediately took up the challenge and came forward and established now today i can very confidently say there are more than about 2000 industries which are tier 1 and tier 2 industries more mm-hmm. from subsystem to system right. working on and people are establishing their own infrastructure and coming up and then trying to export the things in a big way this is a sea change and industry uh, one uh, evident when i joined uh, they have been only built to print the yes. industries they were drawing and then they were making and up to very few industries correct now there are large number of industries that have converted themselves into bts built to specifications yes. you give the specification they are able to design they are able to develop mm-hmm. that state has come that's how we are also able to make the systems very quickly absolutely if you do everything yourself mm-hmm. it in drdo it is impossible to make systems quickly So it is because of the ecosystem which has come in. You are an academy, sir. You are an academy. So you are tied up with academy. You have the young scientist program that you had launched. Yes, uh, really. Uh, large number of academic institutes have started working with us, and then large number of projects, research is going on, right. and DRDO has established 15 centers of excellence in various academic institutes, sure. working on the most frontier technologies. Right. And as I said, uh, the honourable prime minister's um, idea, what he has given in 2000. Uh, 14 uh, saying that you need to establish young scientist laboratories where all the scientists are below 35 years right. so five young scientist laboratories have been established and they are also working on various technologies asymmetric technologies artificial intelligence cognitive technologies and uh, you know quantum technologies and smart materials these are all the technologies they are working so that gives a fillip to the youth of the country also. absolutely and uh, in fact uh, one of the important factors now in the current flux in the international arena where uh, israel uh, one of our major defense partners uh, major suppliers russia one of our major suppliers maybe the largest suppliers they have their own challenges and own problems to deal with so they want their supplies for their own armed forces at that point in time i think the indian industry and the indian armed forces would uh, look for indigenous uh, technology and Will probably be benefiting from uh, all these programs at uh, base that has been built now. See, the message is very clear that from these two wars, we can see that you need to have your indigenous equipment, which is state of the art. Right. This is very clear. The state of the art, uh, we need to see that they are developed indigenously here. Correct. Right. The warfare is continuously changing. The technology is playing a major role in this. See, never we have seen such a thing in the, any previous wars. The way the UAVs and UAV surveillance and UAV the uh, attacks have happened. So unless the UAV technologies, mm-hmm. which we also master, which actually the startups have mastered in a big way, more than about three hundred startups have come up in the country working on the drones, drone-based surveillance, drone-based 
you know, so much of offensive things and all that. Absolutely. So you have to keep yourself mm. as a country pace with the technology, making the state of the art system. This you won't get the state of the art equipment from outside. So Correct. you need to make it. And there is a di- important need mm. for making these things very quickly. Yeah. Looking at what is happening worldwide, mm. you you should not be catching the world. Right. You should be along with the world, leading the world, leading the world, leading the world. Leading the world. That's, That's right. the important mm. thing today. And so we all need to work together, together, and particularly the academia working on advanced technologies and trying to know the technologies. And then the startups looking at the innovations yes. in various sectors, particularly in the AI, ML, and uh, then <coughs> even cyber, mm. and talking about quantum, and then talking about the fifth dimension of warfare, right. uh, space-based technology. These are all the areas where people need to work. High power electromagnetics, mm. are working on lasers, right. and smart materials. Uh, these are the things where we need to work and put innovations in that, and trying to equip the equipment in such a way that that becomes the state of the art equipment or first of its kind of equipment. Sure. So, you know, uh, there is this uh, uh, tendency for people to uh, earlier, at least uh, say 10 years ago, to put down DRDO and saying that DRDO is cost overruns, mm-hmm. time overruns, all that. I think that is now talk of the past, if I remember correctly. Absolutely. You know, there are, see, one thing is in an R&D, there will, everything cannot go very smooth. R&D is one way there can be risk also. Mm-hmm. But then, today, if you look at the past, then we are able to develop the things so quickly, exactly. so fast. QRSAM, we developed it very fast. Mm-hmm. We have developed um, Pinaka, guided Pinaka, so fast. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you look at uh, the year we launched the uh, things, very quickly they have been sure. developed. So many things have come up very, very fast compared to any world standard. Today we are fast. Yeah. See, and we all know, and it's the same DRDO has done the anti satellite test. I was just going in to do that. When you did that uh, three or four years ago in 2019, uh, you know, that was one of the breakthrough moments and you were at the helm of it. Just tell us a little bit more uh, how it was uh, achieved in such a short time. See, firstly, one thing is uh, the um, NSK was... Uh, with us completely and, right. and driving it and it is the Honorable Prime Minister's directive that this needs to be done to showcase the Indian capabilities to the world that the technology, technological prowess this country prowess and the Honorable Prime Minister said that uh, this should be done in a short period of uh, two years mm-hmm. and should be uh, known to minimum people right. and so the people took up the challenge mm-hmm. and the scientists at least I can say about 300 people uh, Work day and night, mm-hmm. and um, every day probably leaving at three o'clock or so early morning to home, and then again back in the office by nine thirty mm-hmm. or so, and working. And we used to have reviews at night, one o'clock, two o'clock, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, we lived up to the expectations, and then made it and uh, made the country at the fourth country in the world after Russia, America, and China that mm-hmm. this feat is done with minimum debris, minimum Absolutely. debris, and which have also decayed very fast. Yes. So, world has uh, seen the technological capability of the country that you could do it and quietly without anyone knowing. And <laughs> exactly. Yes, Keep it secret, secret must have been a big challenge, yeah. I think, uh, so, that way. So, I think that was a breakthrough moment and uh, I think uh, the world doesn't know much more about it. It needs to know much more about it. They don't know much more about it. But we'll talk about that uh, in a separate program. But uh, let me also talk about innovators. You know, you uh, now, after your uh, superannuation from DRDO, you've been going around academia talking to young scientists, young innovators. What is your hope for them and what is your confidence in them? Firstly, thing is, they are the future of India. They have a lot of ideas, a lot of minds, and they have a lot of capabilities which are coming up. Mm. And uh, unlike earlier, it is not that people are only getting into IT or um, software related. Mm. They have entered into propulsion areas, they have entered into material technology, they are entering into cotton technology and all that. See, in this country, has got about six or seven startups in quantum itself today. Yeah. And propulsion itself, there's the complete UAVs have been captured by them. And this, the space activities uh, which are related, many things have been taken up. So you have today, you've seen that more than one lakh startups have come up in the country. And there are thousands working for the defense and aerospace itself. Right. And they're all working in the frontier. See, the mindset of the youngsters is not trying to make something for you alone. They are trying to make as a globally competitive product. That means what the product comes out of these youngsters is going to be uh, a, a state-of-the-art technology or innovative technology which is coming up. So they're all working. Lots of schemes have come with the government and supporting either a DPIT, a NITI, or a Ministry of Defense itself. 
whether technology development funding or IDEX programs are supporting them in a big way. Sure. And there is an encouragement, a lot of startups which they have developed. Now, the armed forces are acquiring also. So, that is also giving a confidence. So, so, there are more and more people are investing into it. I'm sure in the next two to three years, we'll see number of products which world has not seen from this country. Mm. I'm very sure. Which is, uh, which is a very encouraging sign. But so, let me have uh, a final uh, thought from you. Uh, you now the president, or you've been the president for Aeronautical Society of India for a long time, and you're coming up with a big program uh, this month. Uh, what is the objectives? Uh, what are the objectives that the society has, and uh, what do you hope to achieve through the society? See, the society has been formed in the year 1948 under the patronage of the Honorable Prime Minister, saying that the country's aeronautics and aerospace activities have to be uh, collectively driven, bringing all the people and synergetically and. So that's the idea. And Aeronautical Society has been bringing all the people together, understanding the problems, what is the direction we need to take, how to resolve the issues, how to work with the government, where the policies are required, where the infrastructure support has been. And so it has expanded as 19 branches, whether it is uh, uh, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bangalore, or Trivandrum, and both space, DRDO, HL, NL, all the people who are connected and academicians, all have been together. And so, it has been the backbone every two months meeting and having workshops and discussions, seminars, how to go ahead. So, the country has come up to this stage as a back end, mm -hmm. the Aeronautical Society has been working. The Aeronautical Society has been having all the prestigious people at the Russian Soviet, whether Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, the former Krishnadas Nair, Dr. V.K. Sarosad, and G. Maladachan Rao, and Kiran Kumar. These are all the past presidents who have. And I have taken over as the version last year. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily, this year happens to be the 75 years completion of the year. Not That's right. It's a big yeah. program that you're doing. Yes. We have a November 18th and 19th uh, event uh, commemorating the 75 years of aeronautical society. We have an international conference mm -hmm. on the theme of uh, aviation and uh, aerospace in 2047. Oh, so working okay. towards so 25 time. years. 25 years. And the President of India is coming as the chief guest of the function. And uh, we have a lot of uh, experts from abroad coming and within the country and having deliberations for two days and coming out with a vision document. Oh, that's excellent. So let me wish you all the best for that event and that program. And I'm sure you have much more to contribute uh, going forward. Uh, one inning has ended. Maybe the second innings will be much stronger and sex more successful than before. Thank you very much for coming in here. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. So, viewers, that was Dr. Satish Reddy, um, distinguished scientist and uh, well-known, uh, in fact, scientist uh, in the country, uh, who was also taking forward the uh, vision of Make in India and uh, Atma Nirvarta in both defense and aerospace. So, uh, we wanted to understand from him what is happening, and I think he's given us the entire 360-degree uh, view on that. So, keep watching Bharat Shakti. Of course, uh, keep sending us feedback and comments. We welcome them. And you know where to reach us as far as social media handles are concerned. They are all visible on the screen. And keep watching Bharat Chakti. Uh, until the next time, it's goodbye.